a presentation now about geoengineering. Okay? The chemtrail words to be used. Those people who still find it hard to hear chemtrail and believe that it is a theory, please listen and come and speak to our presenter after this presentation. This is important, yeah? We're all going to start getting ill. If you're not already ill, if you've got a weakened immune system like me, I'm HIV positive, my immune system is buggered, okay? Everybody would know people in their lives that are going to get cancer. You want to know the reason why? You pay attention now. It gives me great pleasure to hand over to Alan Potter, who's come all the way from Kent, just for you guys tonight. Okay, thank you. My name's Alan. I'd like to give a little uh, short presentation about chemtrails. Can I ask, um, how many people are aware of chemtrails already? Yes. yes! Okay, there's quite a few of you. Okay, did you notice the chemtrailing that was going on yesterday morning? You'd have to be up pretty early. If you take a look at the, the wall over there, this is a time-lapse video. It, it's over an hour's period um, yesterday afternoon from about 10.30 to 11.30. And it just shows plane after plane flying past, leaving trails which spread out into an artificial layer of clouds. Interdispersed with those planes that are leaving the chemtrails are normal planes as well. You can see them shoot past just short little contrails. There in the middle of the screen there, you can see like artificial clouds which have got the uh, like rippled, a rippled effect. Okay. I'll stop that now. <clears throat> okay, just to give you a definition. A contrail, it's like these two pictures below, it's just water vapor. It's not even, um, the, uh, the exhaust gases from the jet engines don't really contribute to it. It's the um, water vapor which is um, exhausted from the back of the jet engines. And there are uh, lots of tiny little droplets of water, which after a short period of time dissipate, like your breath on a cold day. Now chemtrails are something quite different. Um, they are chemical or biological agents deliberately sprayed at high altitudes for the purpose undisclosed to the general public. And you get all these long lines in the sky, go from horizon to horizon, and they spread out into an artificial layer of clouds. Now, if you do a quick search for chemtrails on the internet, uh, you, you're going to come up uh, to the Wikipedia page, which says there is no scientific evidence for chemtrails. But I've listed 10 items there of scientific evidence which I think backs up uh, chemtrails. The main one is observational evidence. We can see what's happening. We can see they're not normal contrails. Um, and you get a lot of abnormalities with these, which I'll show you in a minute. You get, uh, you've also got whistleblowers, which I can show you some. Um, you've got erratic flight paths. Most planes just want to go from A to B as quickly as possible, drop off their passengers. But we've got planes which are late. Huh? Closer. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got, um, if you have a look on Flight Radar 24, you can plot the paths of these planes and you can see the path they take, which isn't straight from one city to another. They fly around in circles, do funny patterns. A lot of these planes, although some are commercial jets, a lot of them are, must be military planes because they're not, they have no transponder, which shows up on Flight Radar 24. Okay, you also get people, there's a lot of reports of people getting sick after heavy chemtrailing days. And... Um, Lots of people have done chemical analysis, water samples, air samples. Secret spraying has been admitted. And there is official documentation to back it up as well. These are a few of the pictures I've taken uh, near where I live in North Kent. In these pictures, you can see ordinary contrails there against uh, chemtrails which to me suggests it's not down to atmospheric conditions, but you've got separate planes which are leaving normal contrails, and then you've got the other planes which are laying chemtrails. Now, although no one knows for certain, um, a lot of this is speculation, but 
Uh, it's backed up by pictures and stories on the internet. Um, some of these chemtrails are laid by the, uh, are probably laid by the fuel which goes through the jet engines, but also they can come out of nozzles on the wing edges. You've got a few pictures up there. The one on the top left is boxed. You have little, um, little nozzles on the wing edges where these um, chemtrails are coming from. Now, something I quite often see and I find difficult to photograph because I haven't got a very good camera is um, a lot of these planes must have lots of nozzles along the wing edges and they're giving off like a, a big mist out the back instead of two distinct trails from the jet engines. So these are a few pictures I've got from the internet. Some planes which are obviously spraying something other than what's coming out of their jet engines. Okay, so all the particles that they're spraying into the atmosphere um, increase the electron density of the atmosphere to allow heart facilities to operate and modify the weather, which is the main purpose of chemtrails. Thank you. Okay, the heart facility. Now, this web page has been taken down, but I took this screenshot um, a, a few months ago. Now, HARP stands for High Frequency Active Oral Research Program, and it presents itself as an ionospheric, uh, sorry, ionospheric physics and radio science facility. Now, that website has been taken down now, but there's a whole lot more of these facilities uh, popping up everywhere. The top two pictures show the HARP facility in Alaska. The next two pictures down show the HARP facility in Wales, in Glamorganshire. These are popping up all around the world. There's one in Australia. There's one in India. I don't know if any of you remember this spiral in the sky. It was in the newspaper some time ago. I think there was a lot of speculation about it, and then they came out and said it was an, um, an out-of-control Russian missile. <laughs> I didn't believe it either. <laughs> but it was very close to the ISCAP um, facility in Norway, which stands for European Incoherent Scatter Scientific Association. And, it's more, and that's um, identical to the HARP facility in Alaska. And there's a few more pictures. There's one in Russia. There's another one in Menworth Hill. And there's also a mobile one, which travels around by sea. Apparently this one, it was in the newspapers, and it was setting off for North Korea. I'd like to just show you a few documents which you can quite easily find on the internet. If you phone up, if you phone up anyone in officialdom, phone up your local MP, phone up the, um, the environment agency, they all deny chemtrailing. But there's documents out there which say they want to control the weather. This one is a paper presented to um, the Air Force in 1996, and it's all about controlling the weather by 2025. Pretty much what it says is that um, they're already experimenting. But from, my, from what I've seen, it's a full-scale operation already undergoing. This, this can be found on the internet. You can look for yourself. OK, and one more official document. This is from the Royal Society, geoengineering, taking control of the planet's climate. So there's scientists out there working on this. And um, it's all possible. They have the technology to do it, they're discussing it, and we see it going on about our heads, but then when we ask them about it, they always deny it. But that's evidence to me. Um, if anyone wants to talk to me afterwards, I've got everything on my computer, I've got a file as well. Uh, if you want to give me your email address, I can send you any information you might want. But I'll just quickly go through what we can do about this to stop this happening. Okay, the first thing is, we need to raise awareness, which is what we're doing now. Now, if you go away and two, two, two friends, and they, they the next day go and tell two of their friends, after about 30 days, a million people will know about this. I think this is the biggest obstacle in our way. A lot of people just aren't aware of what's going on, so we need to make them aware. Um, you can also do that by sending emails. 
just tell all your friends. Although they'll deny it, call up your local agency, uh, environment agency or, your, or the civil aviation authority. Also, if possible, contact the local media. Contact your local MP, even the police if you feel inclined. Try and do whatever you feel comfortable with. A lot of people print flyers, distribute them whenever they're out. Um, you can also go to the directive on the Chemtrails Project UK website. Something that I do is I have a folder. I've, um, I've compiled a folder which is, has all the evidence I've shown you there and a whole lot more and a lot of pictures because a lot of people, they don't even look up at the sky. But um, we need to make people aware of this and do it in any way you feel comfortable with. All right, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.